Honourable Minister, um, the session co-conveners, partners, uh, and all distinguished participants. Uh, my presentation will put into context uh, the session that we have today. I will highlight um, the relationship. I'll talk about GWP, but I also want to contextualize it in the, uh, in the way that we have been cooperating with AMCAO. And then I also want to put into context some basic information about indicators and what we are trying to do during this session. Um, in June 2011, AMCAO launched a gender strategy uh, for mainstreaming gender within the African context in the water sector. This was a result of a three-year participatory process involving stakeholders in 40 countries, clearly most effective and consultative, and it was one of the processes, highly participatory processes that, is, that has ever been taken in Africa. The GWP multi-stakeholder platforms in Africa participated in this process, and um, Simon Tuo, that most of you know, facilitated this process on behalf of GWP. And um, I would like to say right at the beginning that GWP welcomes and supports the AMCAO gender strategy. We welcome it because it provides a pan-African framework which is informing the GWP gender strategy that we are hoping will be launched in December, end of this year. But you may be asking, uh, within the AMCAO gender strategy, what is really the role of the stakeholders? Within the strategy, the stakeholders, the AMCAO strategy invites the inputs of multiple stakeholders in line with their mandates and expertise. In other words, as a partner, you can work to demonstrate approaches to economic empowerment through access to water for productive uses. You can undertake analytic work to build evidence on the role of gender in food security. You can support training uh, or work collecti collectively with the water and sanitation program and countries on an M&E framework from AMCAO, etc. So essentially, with all the seven strategic objectives of AMCAO, any partner is free and welcome to add value by contributing in an area for which they've got the expertise. Um, and of course, the emphasis of the AMCAO gender strategy is partnering rather than doing things alone. Uh, importantly, so that the best practices are institutionalized and that they go to scale. I just would like to say a few words about GWP. Uh, most of you are aware that GWP is a network of institutions that subscribe to uh, the integrated approach of water resources management. And for us, institutions are NGOs, research institutions, uh, private sector companies, um, many institutions in development. And institutions in any country can come together to form a country water partnership. And the institutions that are within a certain a geographical location can come together to form a regional water partnership. The GWP fora at various levels participate. They facilitate multi-stakeholder dialoguing and partnering for action at various levels, in the same way that we are doing here at the global level. GWP work in Africa and other regions adds value to regional and pan-African processes through multi-stakeholder forum. Let's come to the focus of this session Our side event is looking at concrete actions. 
The AMCAO strategy is built on partnering. Our side event is partnering to operationalize and concretize the pillars of the AMCAO gender strategy. And indicators for gender, water, and food security is our focus. The AMCAO gender strategy is at an early stage of implementation. It's one of the most important tools in pushing implementation. One of the important tools in pushing implementation is the existence of key minimum targets and shared indicators for benchmarking purposes against which countries can jointly report on gender, water, and food security. With targets, we can develop indicators for joint learning on key issues, on monitoring. Of course, in this session, our interest is multiple water infrastructure and uses. Women need water for both productive and domestic chores. Our focus is holistic, and our main guiding force is the livelihood approach to development. There is considerable work on indicators by partners and organizations. There is a wealth of knowledge and ideas that already exists. Our session is about joint learning about indicators. It's about pulling together and synthesizing a lot of the work that has already gone on in various organizations. We are not reinventing the wheel. Our work and this session, it pulls partners' experiences together for more consensus on broad targets on what is meant by gender equality concretely in the water, sec in the water sector or water arena. We are thus creating a forum for more collaboration on this area through the AMCAO gender strategy. We are putting procedures in place. If we don't operationalize matters this way, gender equality becomes lip service. For as Sweetman has said, Working with gender issues obliges organizations to set their own houses in order. So we are wanting and we are starting the setting up of our house in order. Just a few words on the evolution of gender sensitive indicators so that when the various speakers come to make their presentations, we all are at the same level. Before the 1970s, most attention was paid to economic indi indicators. And at that point in time, the development focus was mainly economic growth and infrastructure development. In terms of water resources management, there was the obsession with what I would like to call the infrastructure approach. It was infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Uh, this is a period which was clearly, uh, neo which was clearly characterized by neoclassical theories. Then the aid agencies came in, and then they introduced the idea of social indicators, but still they were not gender sensitive. Then mid 90s, then the focus of gender indicators of empowerment and participation and gender sensitive indicators that, and gender sensitivity started to come in. And currently, there is uh, a lot of emphasis on gender indicators, uh, and there is great importance in donor agencies' work on the same uh, USAID, World Bank, IMI, IFPRI, FAO, and the whole NGO sector. And globally, there is this trend on gender development indicators, the GEMS, the African Development Development Indicators, Women and Agriculture Empowerment Index, et cetera, et cetera. So, but why are we wanting to be putting indicators on the forefront? We are doing this because we want to concretize, it's a way to concretize gender actions. 
because it's a way to hold governments and institutions accountable. Uh, we have to do this because that's one way we can advise policymakers and program managers. We enable them better planning to make better planning and actions for gender equality. It enables us to clarify messages for gender changes and advocacy, and it generates evidence for policy and influence. In terms of methodologies, because many of the speakers who will make their presentations will touch on this as well, in terms of the type of indicators that they will suggest. Uh, firstly, we need to say that not everything that can be counted is not everything that can be counted. Um, and not everything that is counted counts. Uh, and in terms of the methodologies that will be used and that they will use in their presentations, of course they will highlight the quantitative indicators the hard facts, uh, but then there will also be qualitative, qualitative indicators whereby we are trying to gain richer uh, insights and greater understanding and to un unravel causal relationships. And of course, the participatory approaches uh, where men and women uh, are the targets and actually make their own choices will also be an issue that will come up to the discussions. Effectively, when we are looking at indicators, there will be a presentation indicators in terms of quantitative as well as qualitative and in the context participatory approaches. Uh, in terms of the types of indicators, we'll be looking at input indicators uh, and the concern here is that of resources de devoted to gender in work plans, in projects, uh, in programs. Often people say that if you want to see how serious an organization is on gender, you look at input indicators. Let's see what comes out through the discussion. Then there's the process indicators where we are looking at achievements during implementation and where we are tracking gender progress. I'm about to get there. And then we also are interested on output indicators as well as outcome and longer term gender related results uh, of the project. And of course the impact is of interest to us. So what this session means um, is that when we look at indicators, we need to keep our eyes wide open. The approach that we'll be taking in this session is that being attentive along the journey is as important as the destination. So we are looking into the process, we are interested in the outcome, we are interested in the impact, we are interested in the whole spectrum. And we are hoping during this session we will look and there will be a presentation of indicators that shows the whole spectrum uh, as we would like this session to focus on. Thank you, Madam Chair.